like you and I know that we're gonna be together for the rest of our lives. So this is love. I tried calling her. She uh, she erased my phone. <laughs> there has to be a limit. Ten thousand per month. <laughs> How much do you think you spent on her? About seventy thousand dollars. So this is love. Awesome. If I were to ask you, who is the most toxic couple that has ever been on 90 Day Fiancé? That's a pretty broad question, right? You can probably think of so many. But let's add in that I'm not talking about in the last few seasons. I'm talking about who is the worst couple to ever appear on the original 90 Day Fiancé ever. I know, it still doesn't completely narrow it down, does it? Well, since you clicked on this video, you already have my answer. It's George and Anfisa. And what's ironic about this is I actually went in to do a rewatch of this couple because it had been quite a while since I had seen their seasons. And I actually didn't even go into the rewatch with them as my top toxic choice until I rewatched their entire story. Yes, it's actually worse than I remember. So some background here. These two first appeared on season four of 90 Day Fiance, which premiered in 2016, and they repeatedly returned to the franchise. So I created a series of videos covering the full story about this couple. This video will be part one of a six video series that has already been recorded and will be posted back to back on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next three weeks, unless there's a holiday. I will also pin a comment with the date of when the next video will premiere. So let's go back in time, shall we? Let's relive this relationship relationship monstrosity that is George, the pathological liar, and Anfisa, the eye-rolling gold digger. Meet George. I'm an entrepreneur in the medical marijuana industry, growing and providing medicine to patients. He says that this gives him a six-figure income. And it's one of the very first things he says about himself too. He's not like, I'm a hardworking family guy. It's, I make this amount of money. And he says that when marijuana is legalized, his business could be worth millions. Emphasis on the could be worth, because it's not currently worth that now. So there's this immediate setup of like, okay, George says he has money in a successful business. Understood. Got it. Then George talks about how he met his Russian fiance, Anfisa. She is 20 years old, which is young, my god, and she's coming to the US on a K-1 visa. Anfisa is coming over on a visa. He says that he initially saw a picture of her online and fell in love with, you know, her mind. He says that he initially tried to send her a couple of messages on Facebook, but she didn't respond. So he tried to say something funny and it actually got her attention. And he ended up flying out to meet her. We've gone to Barcelona, Paris, France, Italy. Our last trip was to the Canary Islands. After only spending about a month total in person, George is ready to go to Russia to bring in Fisa to the US on the K-1 visa. They always introduce these stories like they are all about love at first, don't they? Because after that romantic-ish sounding intro, we shift to George trying to explain how, you know, by the way, when he goes to meet Anfisa, she wants him to bring her a $10,000 Chanel purse. You know, no big deal. But he says he's already spent a lot of money on her, and we know he's not yet a millionaire. So how much money have you spent, George? About $70,000 since we've been dating. Yike. George ends up saying no to the Chanel bag request and Anfisa immediately cuts off contact. No red flags there, right? So of course everyone around him is saying what is probably really going on here. She's just marrying you for your money. I remember watching this when it premiered thinking, this guy said he makes a good amount of money, but does this woman care about how much money he makes if she's already asking for these luxurious gifts? Because Anfisa does not just stop when she doesn't get what she wants. She throws a huge tantrum. I tried calling her, she, uh, she erased my phone. <laughs> she has my Apple ID and password. She actually even logs into George's email and cancels his plane ticket to come get her. You're ignoring me, you're ignoring me. Yeah, and we haven't even formally met her on the show yet either. So they don't talk for a while. 
But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she one day calls George and says that she got on a plane to come to the US. It's crazy. <laughs> She's crazy. And yes, she really did get on a plane and is waiting at the airports. And why she changed her mind so suddenly is not clear at all. You have to wonder, did she plan to meet some other guy here first and that one didn't work out or something? There is no reason given for why she canceled tickets and then just appears at the airport and has George pick her up. None. And George doesn't seem suspicious of this at all either. He thinks it's some sort of cute game. It's not cute. It's not cute at all. <laughs> If she did actually plan to meet someone else, I'm guessing that that $10,000 Chanel bag she wanted George to bring was a test to see if he would buy her something that was really expensive before she came, prove he has the money he says he does type situation. But he failed the test and it seemed like she was going to cut him off completely. So what, now these 90 days are just some trial run to see how this goes? She's really just here to see what she can get and then leave if it's not enough? Because here she is. <laughs> I'm Anfisa, I'm 20 years old, I'm from Moscow, Russia. And it's interesting how George sets this up. He picks her up in this nice new car, he takes her to a nice hotel, says they're going to find an apartment together, even though she already seems to be suspicious as to why they don't have an apartment already. He does all of this while telling the audience that he has something to tell her, something that he has been hiding. Classic 90 day move there. There's a big secret he's keeping, except his secret seems to be extra shady. As the 90 days tick by, things seem to be okay between them. They don't seem too miserable yet, but there is still this constant conversation about money. There has to be a limit, at least an allowance. 10,000 per month? <laughs> George acts like this is something that will just go away. And Fisa, on the other hand, straight up admits that she only came to the US to see how things would go. She wants to see if George will live up to the financial promises he made her. I guess we can now say that that's why she magically appeared at the airports. She says she'll leave if she doesn't get what she wants. So no. This conversation about money is not going to just go away. If he doesn't do what she wants, she's out. George's family is also skeptical and doesn't trust her. And this is when my mind starts to like lean into the idea that Anne Fisa is the villain in this situation. I mean, she is honest about what she wants, but she's very controlling and she only seems to care about George's money. We still aren't given a lot of information yet about the money part either. Why is she expecting so much when we know that George isn't that wealthy? Ironically though, as I'm starting to feel slightly bad for George, his lies begin to unravel. And I haven't been completely honest with Anfisa as to why I haven't been able to get the apartment. And that's when it gets really hard to decide who is worse than the other person. So what happens is living in a hotel long-term eventually made Anfisa suspicious. So George has something to admit to her. Every apartment asks if I've been convicted of a felony mm -hmm. and I have a criminal background. So we have a gold digger and technically a criminal. The big difference being that the gold digger has been pretty honest and the criminal has not. When I was arrested at 21. Um, I ended up pleading to a deal and uh, I was stuck with a felony for cultivating marijuana. And what he did as a criminal isn't what's making me see him as less of a victim and more of a slimy person. It's more how he went about lying to her about his real life. He's not just living in hotels with a nice car because he's just so wealthy and can't find the right place to live and just travels and does whatever he wants. And I think that's the vibe he tried to give off. And that's just one lie. There are going to be others. And if you've watched this story before, you know that that's just the tip of the iceberg, which we will get to. I didn't think you would ever find out. So he actually explains that he's doing this hotel hopping thing because he can't get an apartment with a felony on his record. George explains how laws have changed and now he's no longer worried about getting in trouble like that again. Oh, the irony. <laughs> And Anfisa doesn't seem to have a big problem with George's felony. Because not like he killed somebody or something like that. If anything, she's just more concerned with where they will live. But when they do finally find a place to live, it does not solve all of their problems. Instead, George's money situation starts to become more and more clear to Anfisa. When Anfisa is trying on wedding dresses, I think she starts to realize that George's true budget is not what he's saying it is. She's realizing that he's not just being cheap. He doesn't actually have what she thought he had. I deserve expensive things that make me look beautiful, but I know George doesn't want to spend that much money. 
And at this point, we can say that he has been honest with the audience about his income, but not her. Anfisa was promised a certain lifestyle. And as he pushes back, Anfisa gets more and more unhappy. You want expensive things and it's, you know, hard for me to keep up. This reminds me a lot of the Mike and Jimena situation. We at first thought that Mike and Jimena had just met online and fell in love. That's pretty much what their intro at least told us. And Mike had this habit of buying Jimena whatever she wanted at first. And they seemed to be happy until Mike started to say no. And then Jimena got the ick, broke up with Mike, and he acted so shocked. It actually came out later that Jimena was a cam girl and Mike was a customer of hers and basically told her to stop doing that. And if she did and married him, he would fund her life. But when the funding stopped, Mike thought that they loved each other and that the love would prevail. But there wasn't love. She just wanted the money. So that didn't happen. Love did not prevail. In this case, Anfisa says that George promised her all of these things. So before she even comes over to the US, she is told that she will get whatever she wants. And she believes that. And then she moves to the US and things are not what she was promised. So now the question becomes, did she really just come over because of what she was promised financially? I'm not that wealthy to like compensate for all of the things that you like. Or is there a genuine love connection involved in this as well? And the answer to that gets kind of confusing. Mike the house elf wants to remind you to subscribe to this channel. Has given Dobby a shock. Dobby is free. If you don't, he will appear in your room tonight to tell you he loves you. Demo. Because George doesn't seem to say no to everything. But when he does start to push back, she does not just get on a plane and go home. I do think that there must be some feelings involved because she wants to stay. Or maybe I'm confusing that with her wanting to create more opportunities for herself in the US. You know, get a green card. It's not really clear yet. She does try to get into modeling and does start to talk about the green card pretty quickly. But it's still early in this and we still don't know. Because at this point, she still thinks that he has some money, not no money. <laughs> You love that one? So How much what is, is it? 300,000. She seems to understand that he is not as wealthy as he said he was, but she is still testing him. We see them go wedding dress shopping, ring shopping, but we've yet to see them actually buy anything. There's one thing about being reasonable and one thing going over budget and one thing making me a slave for the rest of my life. It seems like she wants him to prove that he will spend a high amount on her or even just give her a real actual budget for something. But he never actually pulls out a card and pays for a high priced item. Not once. George and I need to have a talk about money. He made me a lot of promises and now I'm here and he's not coming through. And he's about to realize how much money actually means to Anfisa. So in my part two video, we find out in one of the most iconic 90 Day Fiance scenes, how much money really means to Anfisa. That video will be posted on my next posting day. I will put the part two posting date in a pinned comment on this video. And if you're watching this later on and part two is already posted, the link will be included in the description below. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.